I think we can separate it pretty easily, right? What type of multiplication can we use? Cross, yeah, we never get to use that. Very good. I love, I don't know why it's fun. It just, right, so this times this. And then uh, this times, I like cross multiplication because I remember when I learned it, I understood it. I was like, oh, I know how to do that. You just cross and you put the things there and, and everything is good. <clears throat> what, what do we do next? What's the next step? Integrate, yeah, integrate, integrate, integration. So this part's really easy, right? The y, there's a one there, right? So we'll just get um, y squared over two, I believe. Yeah, y squared over two. I'll, I'll worry about this C later. Uh, this, e to the square root of x, fun times. Any ideas like how to start it? Really? I don't know. I mean, you mean you still have the square root of x in there, but I think you have the coefficient. It's being the um, derivative of the square root of x. Oh, what do you mean? The square root of x, uh -huh. the derivative would be the coefficient of e to the x. And then you also have the square root of x. Oh, I don't know. Would that work? Yeah, so. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't understand. I was thinking it was wrong. I was thinking you derive the thing that's being raised to and have that as a coefficient. Right. Yeah, so maybe let this be you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yes, that's what I was thinking. Yes, yes, I think that's what you're saying. Yes, yes, so he's right. So let, let you, I'll do it. Where should I do it? Uh, I'll do it here. Uh, I'll do it here. So let you, this is weird. I don't know why I did that. It's too late. So let you equal the square root of x. That's a good step. Like, if you were, like, in a room and you were trapped and you had no food um, and you had to get out, uh, that would be a good first guess. Like, someone said, do it or die. Like, you'd probably do that. How do you get rid of the square root? What do you do to both sides? Square it. Yeah, so just like before, right? Very similar, very similar. Something interesting is gonna happen in this problem. Take the derivative, so we get 2u du equals dx. Okay, so now, what happens here, let's just focus on this one, is it becomes, it becomes, let's see, so dx, dx is 2u du. I'm not going to pull the 2 out. I'm going to leave it in on purpose. Why? Just because I think it might be easier. So 2u du, all, all I've replaced so far is the dx with 2u du, 2u du, 2u du. And then we're left with e to the, and what would go here in this case? u. u. Very good. u. So that's our new integral, right? 2u times e to the u times du. So 2u, it looks really weird. I don't know why it looks so weird. Let me make the du smaller. There we go. Okay, so there's a couple ways to do this. Um, you might be thinking integration by parts. That would work, certainly, right? Uh, I'm going to avoid integration by parts and show you an easier way, okay? So whenever you have like a power of x or a power, a power, something to a power times an exponential, something to a power times a cosine, or something to a power times a so whenever you have something like x squared e to the x or like x squared sine x, I forgot the dx. So stuff like this, you can take a shortcut to parts. You can use what's called tabular. So let's use tabular. So let me just show you how to do it. So basically, um, I think I could squeeze it in here. You pick the piece that you're going to differentiate. So you need to pick something that eventually is 0. So 2u. If you keep differentiating that, eventually it's going to be 0. And then the other piece, you're going to keep integrating it. Okay, so you write down a piece that is eventually 0 and then you write down a piece you can integrate. That's the rule, right? One of the pieces has to be eventually zero. Then you just start taking derivatives. The derivative, uh, what's the derivative of 2u? What would that be? Two. two, yep. And what's the derivative of two? Zero. Zero, so then you stop. Okay, so again, one of the pieces has to eventually be zero. So like 2u cubed would have worked, right? This is super powerful, right? This will save you hours on your life. Uh, and then you just keep integrating e to the u, which is really easy, because you just get, um, e to the u, yeah, so it's e to the u, e to the u. So you pick uh, one, the piece to differentiate, and you just go straight down, boom. And then you pick the piece to integrate, go straight down. Then you always start with plus. So it's plus, minus, plus. It's always plus, minus, plus, always, right? And then you're done, right? Then we're done. Now we just draw arrows, and you just follow the arrows to get the answer. 
So let me go over it again. We'll, after this problem, maybe we'll do another example of this because maybe you've never seen this. It's called tabular. So you pick the piece that is eventually zero after repeated differentiation, so two u, so two, zero. You pick a piece that you integrate over and over again, boom, 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 and then plus, minus, plus, draw arrows, here's the answer. So this thing is gonna be, it's plus, it's all times, it's all being multiplied. So two u e to the u, so two u e to the u, right? That's just following the arrows, right? That u is like hanging there, sorry, there we go. So following the arrows, right? So two u e to the u, and then the next one will be minus minus 2 e to the u. And I don't know what's going to happen with the c. I don't think it's going to be too big of a deal. Um, I mean, we have a 2 here. You can call it c tilde or you can call it c. Um, I don't know what's better. Um, I'm going to call it c tilde just to be cautious. Because we're going to have to multiply it by 2 at some point. So it won't really, yeah. Do you have to integrate the second part of this? Yes, you have to integrate this one. I mean, the, the, yeah, when you write it back in, don't you have to integrate the second one? No, that, that was the integration. That's the shortcut. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, we're done. That's it. Weird, right? I know. So basically, you do this, and then that's the answer. So this is equal to this. It's ridiculous. I will do, we'll do another example. Let me go over it again, and when we're done, I'll do another one. Yeah, it's really. There's another way? Yeah. Integration? Parts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Part, parts. I'm mixing them up. Yeah, you can use parts, too. This is the shortcut to parts. Yeah, so you can use integration by parts also on, on, on this one, right? You, the whole u dv, remember that? The integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. You can use parts. So again, uh, tabular, you pick one that is eventually zero. You pick one to integrate, differentiate, 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 plus, minus, plus, draw arrows, right? Boom. All right, let's, let me come over here because I'm running out of room. Um, let's go ahead and replace u with the square root of x. So we have y squared over 2. I should have just multiplied by 2. It's too late. 2 square root of x e to the square root of x minus 2e to the square root of x plus c to the Beautiful stuff. I guess we have to um, find c at some point. You could find it now, but I think it might be better to just go ahead and solve for y first. Right, let's, let's maybe let's just do that. Um, to solve for y, I guess we can multiply by 2, right? And then take the square root. So we'd have y squared equals 2 times 2 is 4. e to the square root x minus uh, 4 e to the square root x. E to, and then it's going to be plus 2 c tilde. Hmm? Yeah, you can just call that c. Yeah, that's what I, I would have done that if, yeah, mm hmm go for it. Yeah, just call this C, right? So rename it and call it C. Let's take the square root. So you get Y equals plus or minus, right? When you take the square root of a variable, you get a plus or minus. Square root, 4 square root of X, E to the square root of X, minus 4 E to the square root of X, plus, let's just call it C. Let's just call it C. I'll pause here and let you catch up. The next step is a bit tricky, okay? Because we have to determine if it's a plus or a minus. I'll show you how to do that, so. Yeah. This problem is, yeah? And this when you were explaining like C tilde, I feel like is there a difference between just C and C tilde? No, it's just whatever, no. You could have just called it C, then you get two C, and then you can just call it like C1 or so. You can always rename stuff. You K, C, or common letters. Mm -hmm. Don't call it X. <laughs> That'd be bad, or U, <laughs> or Y, yeah. Yeah, just, you can, you can use C1, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, 2C just stays C because it's infinite. Yeah, so I, we just called this C, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can say it, but it's not necessary. You, you didn't even have to do it, actually. You could have just not done it. I think I've done this problem both ways. I've left it as 2C, and then I've, I've solved for C, and I still get the same answer. I think, we'll find out, right, so. Whew, now we gotta use our initial condition, right? So we have to plug in one and set the whole thing equal to two. By the way, if you set this whole thing equal to two, you're gonna have to use the plus, right? Because there's no way, this is, this, is, this is positive or zero, so if you have a negative sign here, you won't be able to get negative two. So we're gonna use the plus. So y of one is the square root, is the square root, uh, let's see, so plugging in 1 for all of the x's, so it'll be 4, square root of 1, I'll just, 
I'll just put square root of 1, e to the square root of 1, minus 4, e to the square root of 1, plus c. Didn't skip any steps. Oh, and that's equal to 2. two. Thanks, Robert. 2. To 2. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. And then we can rewrite this. By the way, everyone see why it's the plus, right? Because you can't have a minus here, right? Because then it won't be, it won't, it, it, you know what? I can do this. Watch this. Let's just try to like put a plus or minus there. I bet it won't make sense. Well, well, let's not do that, no, because you could probably square it and get rid of it. But it doesn't make sense because this is a positive too, so this has to be positive, right? So now we get, I think these cancel, right? So we get the square root of C equals 2 because this minus this is 0. And then to finish, um, what do you do to both sides to finish? Square them. Yeah, good, square them. Good. Square both sides. So you get c equals 4. So there's our c. Mm -hmm. The last thing to do is take the 4 and just put it back in here, right? Just plug it back in. So let's see, we get um, y equals, and again, it's the plus, right? So square root. <gasps> I see something we can do to make it better, maybe, but it's not necessary, I think. I think we can just stop here, but this can be simplified, right? You can pull out a 4, right? And then the square root of 4 is 2, but let's be just a little bit lazy. 